Hey guys, this is Matt Core from controlpaint.com and this is going to be a little bit different than some of the other videos. I am inviting you to come along with me on a sort of a deep dive into mixing paint. I'd argue there's three different tools that you can use in Photoshop to mix paint. I heavily rely on the first one, which is just using the brush tool and the eyedropper for sampling. So what I want to do in this series of videos is to take a look at the other two options. There's the smudge tool and there's the mixer brush. As you can see, the same or similar results can be achieved with all three methods, but it's worth finding out for yourself what works best. So the format's gonna be pretty simple. This video, I'm gonna talk about the smudge tool. Next video is gonna be mixer brush. They're gonna be a little bit longer than normal, but in the week in between, I'm gonna encourage you to make your own brush, and I'll show you how to do that, and then to try the same homework sheet that I'm using in this demonstration and really get a feel for it yourself. And I think a week is about enough time to really give this a try. Okay, on this very basic document, I'm gonna show you what my smudge tool preset does. When I just run it over top of a seam here, you can see it has kind of a disrupted fade. I'll show you here what it does with color. Same thing. Now, some things to notice. I have the smudge tool set to sample all layers. And that just means that I'm working on a separate layer so I can you know, erase away part of it if I want to, and it's not gonna mess up everything below it. But it will pretend for the sake of blending that I'm working on a flat document. Now, when I have a blending tool, the goal is to be able to control the blending. So a great thing to practice is to go from razor sharp on one side to a little more and more blended. And then on the final end, have it be, you know, big fade. And this is something that you have to do a lot in painting, right? Like you have a sharp edge um, that kind of transitions into a softer edge. It's all about edge control. So this smudge tool allows me to make that. And the way that I'm achieving that is not by using uh, sampling like I would with the brush tool, but rather just using careful application of pressure. I'm usually pressing very lightly with my stylus, and I'm also changing the brush diameter. And with those two commands, I'm able to really get a lot of control over that. Okay, so I am satisfied with it at a sort of a high level. Next, let's take a look at a more realistic situation. So here I have all hard edges, and what I want to do is to make softer edges. So I'm gonna make a fresh new layer, and I'm gonna enlarge the diameter. And the size of the diameter of this is really the important part I found. So I'm actually extending beyond where I want to paint. And this is where I think the real power comes in. I can then switch to the eraser tool and carve away what I don't need. And this gets into what I'm calling temp layers in a lot of my videos, where you're using the temporary separation of layers to your advantage to kind of paint outside the lines and not worry about it. So another thing that you might want to be able to do is have a shadow start tight here and then get really faded out here, like it's um, kind of a soft light source. Well, by applying pressure carefully and you know, using the brush diameter to my advantage, I'm able to get that effect. So the only blending I'm doing here is with the smudge tool. And this feels very weird for me because I'm so used to using just the brush tool and the eyedropper, but I have to admit, I do like the look that this gives. You can use it to just soften up an edge a little bit by using a really narrow brush diameter or if I wanna say, uh, fade out this background horizon line, I can make a new layer, use a huge diameter, and really just pull a big fade across there. Now, naturally, I then wanna to switch to the eraser tool and kinda of get my hard edges back, but that's possible because I made a fresh layer in order to make this transition. You can see, I can toggle it on and off. And then sometimes you're gonna get you know little errors, and that's another great opportunity to use the smudge tool. It really kind of pulls things together. So this 
is a great test case. Now let's talk about how to make it. So first I want you to go to the smudge tool and then open up the brush palette. And you can find this here in the window menu. This is where all the settings are. So by default, yours is probably gonna look something like this. And your strength up here in the top bar is probably gonna be at 100. If that's true, you get this kind of marbling rake effect. And that's really not what you want. So importantly, we're working on a new layer and we have sample all layers selected. That way it just kind of keeps the canvas safe. So the first setting I wanna work with is in brush tip shape. I just wanna drag this spacing way lower. This is just gonna make the brush more lightweight and it's gonna have less lag. It doesn't really make much difference at this point. Where it's gonna start making a difference is when we turn on this next feature, which is called scattering. So we turn on scattering and we crank that up just a little bit and you'll immediately notice this difference. So what this does is it gives it a little bit of a disruption. So some combination of spacing and amount of scattering is gonna help give this a much more natural feel. Now the next thing is we don't want it to be so strong. So I'm gonna drop the strength way down. I usually do, I don't know, less than 10%. Now you can't follow my steps exactly because your computer's gonna be a little different and uh, the resolution you work at has an effect. So you're balancing factors here. You can see immediately that starts looking a lot more like what we're going for. In fact, that might have nailed it. So very low strength, a little bit of scatter. You're going to play with how much scatter there is. And then this spacing is key. Now, another thing you can do if you're not getting quite a soft enough look is you can actually lower the hardness of the brush itself. Now, this is one of those things that will add a little more lag to the computer if you have a slower computer. So maybe keep them hard, but have you know enough scatter and a very soft strength. And somehow balancing those few features, you're gonna end up with something you like. Now it'll take tweaking, but if you get something that seems to be working pretty good, the final step is to open your tool presets window. And you can see here, I have the current tool only unchecked. I like to keep it that way. This is all of my tool presets. And so I have the, the tool behaving the way I like. I just click new tool preset and give it a name. So I'll call it smudge test. And there it is at the bottom of my list. This means that all those settings are saved. So whatever brush I switch to, I can then just click on smudge test and I have my smudge again. So I encourage you to play around with those settings until you find something that feels good save a preset, and then download the sample art at the bottom of the post. Take a week with this, really. Get a feel for how the smudge tool works, because next week we're going to do it all again, but using the mixer brush. So have fun mixing, and thanks for coming to the site, guys.